and to start transporting oil in tanks by rail, driving entire trains across the country. It was he who stopped saving on the safety of refineries when he assessed the damage caused by constant fires. And the first American refineries were literally sheds. The oil men thought, oil is a profitable business, but soon it will be all pumped out, and therefore they did not see the point in investing in the infrastructure. When Rockefeller began to export oil, he required devices to transfer it from tanks to tankers quickly. Rockefeller, at his own expense, equipped the necessary railway stations with him. At first glance, he just gave them to the railroad for free. But this, in addition to the volume of transportation, became an argument for lowering the tariff and allowed Rockefeller to transport oil by rail three times cheaper than his competitors. Rockefeller also owned several iron mines. When he realized it was more profitable to transport ore to blast furnaces and ports on ships than on trains, he built his own fleet from scratch. Rockefeller's partners considered his innovations too risky and did not want to invest in them. In such cases, he said, Okay, I will invest the money alone, but all the profits will be mine too. After that, the partners immediately became accommodating. Everyone knew that since Rockefeller was ready to invest alone, there would definitely be a profit.